Tonight, we're going to witness the birth of a very special baby. It's the first baby of the new year born in Belfast, a year which promises hope of peace in Northern Ireland. We've also traced some of the other babies born first on New Year's Day during the last 25 years. The troubles are etched on their lives. Three members of my family was killed during troubles. News desk, I'm Bob Huggins. Good evening. An incendiary device discovered in a Belfast city centre clothes shop this evening has been made safe. New Year's Eve in Belfast. A grand occasion. A ball at the City Hall. Of course, at this time of year, we're always hoping for a better 1994 than we've had in 1993. It's been a terrible year for the city. But nevertheless, as the Queen said in her uh, Christmas message, the people of Northern Ireland have great fortitude and they're very brave. And um, they, have fa they have not been uh, beaten down by 25 years of terrorism. They're not going to be. different sort of New Year gathering. The Dockers Social Club is non-sectarian, but 15 months ago, Protestant paramilitaries sprayed this hall with gunfire. Three people were shot. The fact is that uh, we have encouraged people of all persuasions to come together here. And it wasn't easy to, it wasn't easy to achieve this, but we have achieved it and uh, we have a band on the stage here that uh, uh, there are two Protestants and two Catholics, and they call themselves Harmony. And you can't have you can't have more than that. Harmony, peace. I don't know what the chances of peace are, but I hope there will be, because I'm running a small family now, and I wouldn't like to see them through what I sing. I'd just like them to grow up normally and not watch what we've been through. It's the end of another horrific year for the people of Northern Ireland. In October alone, 27 people died in 31 days of terror. Seven people were shot dead when Protestant paramilitary gunmen opened fire on Halloween revelers at a bar in Greysteel. Nine Protestants were blown up by an IRA bomb in a fish shop on the Shankill Road. And I think that I probably find the Shankill bombing harder to cope with than almost anything I'd seen. Because obviously of the number of people who had been killed, I suppose the fact that nothing like that had happened in Belfast for so long, uh, perhaps that I'm older, that I've got a family now, that I've more of a sense of my own mortality, um, and just the general shock and unexpectedness of the whole thing. In all, there were 84 casualties of the Troubles in 1993. It was this drastic upsurge in violence that was behind the signing of the Downing Street Declaration by the British and Irish governments last month, the declared aim to break the cycle of violence and the intolerable suffering of the people. Belfast Royal Maternity Hospital on the Falls Road. It's 11 o'clock in the evening and just an hour to go of the old year. Each baby you deliver, each time you deliver a baby, you know, it's special. You know, because it's not, it's not like even nursing in general. I mean, it's different here. You know, it's, we always have happy times. Very seldom do we have sad times. But you know, the birth of a baby is a happy event in anybody's life. 
Well, I think really possibly could have one baby in the cot of one religion and another baby in the cot of another religion upstairs. And, uh, you know, you would like them to grow up that they were friends. It's not always possible. And I suppose that's what we, we hope for the children, to be able to grow up and, and be happy and have um, healthy, fruitful lives mm -hmm. with peace. Yeah. <laughs> After the celebrations, the hospital waits for the first baby of the new year. But what's happened to the other babies born first on New Year's Day since the troubles started? World in Action has traced four of them. Their stories reflect what it's like to have grown up in Northern Ireland in the last 25 years. Aidan McGuinness was born on New Year's Day 1970 in Altna Gelvin in Derry. He grew up in Straban, a strong Republican area with one of the highest unemployment rates in Europe. His first experience of the Troubles came when he was just a young boy. There was a house around the corner from ours and the police were sergeant, the army were sergeant. There was sort of a commotion outside, there was Land Rovers and sort of pile of people who gathered around. And they sent an army man in with a sniffer dog, and the house was baby trapped. And the bomb went off within the house, and the soldier was killed. So it was all quite exciting, and then sort of like the bomb went off, and we talking about it for days afterwards, like, you know, oh, this was great. Didn't actually realize, didn't strike home that someone had been killed until later, you know, whenever I was sort of, whenever I was adult or sort of more, sort of thought back and thought, you know, that poor guy was killed in there, you know, it was a tragedy. Aidan was next affected by the Troubles when he was only 10. And um, we were sort of playing on the slide and I saw a guy selling newspapers going around the houses. Next thing, there was a couple of shots and we looked over and um, the guy that was selling the newspaper was um, running away. And we went over to investigate and sort of being that age, he sort of very curious, went over to investigate and it turned out that um, there was a glass door in the house, two, two doors. And the guy had come through the first door and the, the guy selling the newspapers had shot him through the glass door. It's, it's the sort of thing you see on TV, but, you know, and then all of a sudden it's real life there in front of you. And that's, I think that, that struck home something that you sort of realised, this isn't right, this is wrong. So um, it's probably the first time that something, it all appeared wrong. Peter Marshall was born on New Year's Day 1973 in the Ulster Hospital. He was brought up in South Belfast, a middle class area of the city. I think there was once when I was in first form in, in, in secondary school that a bomb went off in the city centre and it was just maybe about a mile down the road, it was quite a large bomb. And I remember at the time, you know, thinking where you know, maybe my brother or older brother that was would be out of school at lunchtime was. You know, could he have been caught up in this or somebody in here? Martin Campbell was born on the 1st of January 1974 in Belfast. He grew up in the Catholic area of the Ardoin. First year of school, so it was. The very first year of pre-secondary school. I was going up to school, up a back way. It's just a prison area, right? And I was walking up to school, and you see a bunch of fellas coming around the corner, 
stop me. And I turn around and says, uh, what's your religion? I turn around and says I was a Catholic. And uh, they came in, they beat me up. People walking down the road, no women, children, even a lollipop lady. She was several crossing lady. Uh, she was her as well, and none of them done anything. They seen me getting beat up, but nobody done anything. They just, said, they just stood there and watched. Devil McCloskey was born on the 1st of January 1975 in the Royal Maternity Hospital in Belfast. Growing up in the farm, it was like a big family community type of thing with your cousins living next door to you, so whatever one did, everybody did together. During the summertime was the time when everybody usually in summer holidays was spent like out in the hay fields helping my dad when I was around about nine or ten. I can actually remember the hunger strike and there was a local fellow in Dungiven, Kevin Lynch, who was one of the hunger strikers who died at that time. And um, I vaguely remember everybody putting out, um, had black flags out from their house in sign of respect. And um, such excitement and all the time of his funeral and the hype up around the local town. You no, know, everybody was attending his funeral and I couldn't actually understand what it was all about. But now, you know, I'd understand a lot more what it means. I went, to, I went to Scareville Secondary School. There's a wee lad in our class, Seamus Stuffy. He was shot dead to, just off of New Lodge Road by a policeman who thought he was ratting. He was shot in the heart with a plastic bullet. And he died later in the hospital. The whole school was brought down to the, the main hall. We all said prayers for him. Everybody in the class was pretty bitter about it, and there was rats broke out after it. Three members of my family was killed during the Troubles. One of them, Patrick Rooney, he was shot when he was nine, 1969. He was meant to be one of the first people shot during the Troubles. My aunt, he was shot dead, and my uncle Sean, he was blew up by a car bomb. And there was an explosion. And my father ran around to see what happened. And he looked down the ground and he saw a blanket over an old fella. And he seen he looked down at the shoes. He seen the shoes that the that the my, were my uncle Michael's. My uncle Michael, no, lent them to my uncle, my other uncle, Sean. And he uh he thought it was you no know, Michael had died. Later, uh, later on, he found out that it was my uncle Sean who died. Car explosion. Peter Marshall is now 21 and is studying theology at Queen's University, Belfast. He plays in a band called Hannah's Party. Retrace my path through photographs and letters that were written with a heart that told its stories. In words of pretty gold. Go to with relatives in, in Newcastle in, in England. And it's a very similar city in a lot of ways, but you kind of you be surprised when you drive past the police station and you see that it's unfortified or when you you walk into a store and, and they don't want to search you and that kind of thing, you know, you, you kind of forget that there is uh, there's you you become immune to the security situation and they the various measures and precautions that are taken in Belfast. I think that people have got to wise up and stop uh, action against other people and taking their lives and think about what they actually want in the country and maybe some peace can come from that. And childhood fantasy slips away without trace. But I am reborn in the heat of your embrace. Love is a There's been so much like hatred and um, drilled into people's minds. I mean, I've I've grown up in the knowledge that there's been troubles going on in my country for my entire life, and. Uh, 
there's so much there's so much pressure that's put onto you to support a side or just you know to follow a religion that you're not a part of you know Martin Campbell is now aged 20 and works in the publishing industry when I first started in the job it was the first time I ever mixed with the other religion the present religion because it was brought in mainly Catholic area and people were better against Protestants and Catholics stay in their own districts and Protestants stay in their districts. And it's just walls put up now. When I left school, I went to um, Queen's University in Belfast to study medicine. And I was working in the Matter Hospital in North Belfast. And um, I was down in casualty. Uh, one night was a Friday night. And um, an ambulance arrived with a guy who was brought in. Uh, he'd been kneecapped. And I think it was the second time to be kneecapped, and I think I was more shocked about it than he was. The guy was very blasé about it all, and going, well, I could have been shot again, you know. I think it was a regular occurrence for him, you know. So uh, that, was, that was a shock. Aidan McGuinness was born in this hospital 24 years ago. Now he's a doctor here. I came in here on the Monday morning to work, and we had several victims of the, the Great Seal shooting in, in my ward. I think the feeling around the hospital was more like, what's going to happen next? Sort of, why did it happen here? Um, I think, uh, I, I mean, even Derry and the surrounding area, just the, that was the general feeling. Um, there was fear about who's going to be the next to happen. Were they already going to retaliate and go into some small Protestant village around the area and start shooting people up? Derville McCloskey is now a trainee nurse at the same hospital as Aidan. She too was affected by the Grey Steel Massacre. You could notice the difference in people who didn't bother, who just did them because they were frightened, things you know, related to that. And the general the atmosphere when the funerals were taking place and all, a lot of people who didn't even know the people who were shot went and signed respect and went to visit the place where they all had been shot. One of my old classmates' mother would have been shot, Mrs. Doddy. So she would have been, it's just a matter of knowing somebody, you know, seeing them attending, even the television, the funerals. You feel, you know, that it's close to you, someone you know. I'm 20 years old now, so I am. And I've been brought up through, through the troubles, and it's like normal, it's normal to us. It's, Never, we haven't seen peace, and it's normal to us. Politicians and churchmen have been expressing their hopes for peace in Northern Ireland. In their New Year messages, John Major and Albert Reynolds have again highlighted their desires for an end to the conflict and an acceptance by the terrorists of the ideas and the Downing Street. Three thirty in the morning. January the 1st, the first baby of the new year in Belfast. Natasha Morrison is born in the Jubilee Hospital. Outside, the IRA had a different way of celebrating the new year. First thing after 12 was all the fires and taxes and being cured at the Shore Road. And down below it, there was a picture of me bringing the, the first baby into Northern Ireland. You know, bringing in a new life and people's running about wiping out lives. So I think that's why, well, that's why to me the newspaper think it's so special and to let people see that while that's going on, there's still people really happy and I was celebrating in one way and other people were losing their jobs there. One of the main targets of the IRA bombers was the Linen Hall Library, the oldest in Belfast. During the last year we had all the windows in the library smashed twice. Um, but this is the first time that the library has been specifically targeted. Uh, and I think that that is what appalls me. 
In this case, happily, no lives were lost, uh, but uh, a, a very grave threat uh, was effectively made to the entire heritage of this community. Hello, young lad. How are you doing? Out of bed this morning, the fresh, cool air. New Year's Day for the Reverend Ian Paisley. He's at a ploughing match at Armoy in County Antrim. The overnight fires in Belfast have given him fresh ammunition in his opposition to the Anglo-Irish Peace Initiative. Peace at Christmas, peace in a week. Yeah, well, that's the only peace for us. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, that's far better than the folk from the red up there. Oh, that's ridiculous. And the Prime Minister pathetically pleading oh, with them, you know. Nothing. For nothing. Not Absolutely hard. for nothing. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> about, I think about three to four million pounds worth of damage done. Oh, uh, ele uh, eleven, eleven stores. All decent citizens are crying for peace. But it comes ill from the lips of Jerry Adams to say he's engaged in a peace process. And we see what happened last night, millions of pounds worth of damages. And uh, I mean, we've got to be realistic. Uh, we'll not have peace until the war ends. Are these, these English politicians, they know nothing. They know nothing. I mean, you can't, a prime minister can't fly in for a day and understand the situation. And of course he has been completely outpointed by Reynolds. Aye. Oh, Reynolds has been a proper ass of him. He has fallen seen. for Reynolds' blarney. Well, it's a brand new year, but unfortunately the same old politics of violence. Firebombs last night, more misery. Back in Belfast, a New Year's Day meeting of the Vigil of Hope Peace Group. It was launched after the Grey Steel and Shankill Road massacres last October. The IRA has exhausted all its options. It has had fire bombs, it has had human bombs, no warning bombs, it has killings here, killings in England, killings on the continent, and all to no avail. It hasn't worked. And they know it hasn't worked. And that's why they're going to give up. And that's why we're going to have peace here. But so many peace movements in Northern Ireland have failed before. The vigil group once had 200 members. There is a huge amount of apathy and there's, there's a vast number of people simply want a quiet life. But the people, the people are actually at the sharp end of everything want peace. The moves towards a peace settlement seem precarious and heading towards a possible stalemate. There still remains a gap between the aspirations of the IRA and the government. Unless that gap is closed in the next few weeks, the present peace initiative could be doomed. So many children in Northern Ireland have had their lives blighted by the Troubles. What does the future now hold for babies like Natasha Morrison? Just hope maybe when she's older and when she has her kids, it, it'll be all over and done with. There won't be any more trouble. She won't have to hope for it. Catholics and Protestants could, could live together. If there was peace, like, could live together. But not, not, not at the moment. Like, next generation, maybe. Not this generation. You know, it's exciting that there's been a, um, some kind of political progress. That's, that's good. But it's hard to see immediately that there's going to be any change because of that. For the children in the future, I would hope that 20 years down the line, the child that's born on the 1st of January 1994 would see peace, or see peace being very close. But I think it's going to take that length of time for peace to arrive in Northern Ireland. I was born on the 1st of January 1975, and along with my photograph that day, the headlines was Hope for Peace, and 19 years later, we're still hoping for peace. Mm -hmm.